Hi. <coughs> been playing around with the uh, uh, electric steering column and doing the modifications I need to basically get the steering and my uh, release system <coughs> on it. It's a uh, lifeline unit. Anyway, um, move this <coughs> now the original this is obviously a Vauxhall Corsa B unit um, which is a, a, a car in the UK if, if, you, if you don't know what a Vauxhall Corsa is uh, it's a small GM vehicle this tube here normally extends out to about here somewhere and has the slot piece in and a plastic insert basically to hold all the stalks and stuff now I don't need any of that, I want to bring that back, so I brought this back to here. Now there's a bearing normally in this particular section, because uh, there is no bearing. You can probably see, if we look up there, quite a bit of movement in there. So I stripped down the actual unit itself, and there's a, there's a double bearing in the back, but there's no bearing in the front. They literally rely on the bearing that's on the uh, column part itself <coughs> to make sure it's whole centred. Now there's a big plastic ring gear around here that obviously the motor drives worm and worm and worm gear um, but technically it still needs a bearing at the front here so <coughs> basically what I've done, I've took this back to where it needs to be and I've turned a new piece to go on, on the front there obviously this diameter here sits on there so she sits nicely on the front there we go <coughs> so um, and then inside here, I've turned this down to uh, 33 millimeters internal boards at 33 millimeters, and then basically I've put a needle roller bearing in there, which has a 33 OD and a 25 ID. Uh, <coughs> once the bearing comes, unfortunately it's not here yet. Once the bearing comes, and I've confirmed the fact that I've got the right tolerance for the bore, then basically, uh, basically, oops, that's not even more now. I'll basically weld this to the tube so that'll become part of the tube and then the roller bearing will be bearing support. It leaves me a lot of free room here obviously for my quick release which isn't, isn't very short, it's actually quite long. <coughs> now the shaft, <coughs> let me pull it off again. the shaft itself, the original Corsa, the original GM unit has a spline shaft coming out. Now you don't see that um, what you actually see is that. There we go. What you actually see is that when you buy your course unit, like I said, this tube is extended out to here. And there's the standard <coughs> um, serrated and threaded uh, taper unit there for normal steering it. Well, this piece here effectively is affixed to this spline or serration. Um, but a very novel way of fixing it, actually. If uh, it's the uh, <coughs> so that's a unit I had before, I've chopped up just to see how everything goes. This is the actual one, and basically that used to be that. Um, there's two small, tiny holes. Um, I've drilled them out at the moment, so I can put uh, grub screws in. There's two small, tiny holes in there. that look like they're filled with plastic. And basically, what GM do, or whoever the supplier is. They hold that in its correct position and they inject hot plastic through those two holes into this and then this shaft itself becomes, um, basically becomes one with the other one so that's what holds it. So I'm guessing on an impact it's hard enough if you hit the steering wheel fast enough then it'll push it forward and that allows it to have some form of compressibility as well as obviously having the tube that will compress here as well having the bladder or whatever you want to call it. <coughs> well. To get this off, it's really quite simple. Pretty much, you take the outer shield off here, get a blowtorch on this, not even a lot of heat, basically just a, just warm it up to something reasonable, and then you can pull it off. And then you have your, your raw shaft. Now, I want to turn this part of the shaft to run on my new roller bearing, so what I did basically where the slot is here, I welded the slot up, put it on the lathe, <coughs> Um, 
ordered the slot up, put it on the lathe, and then turned it, turned so that the slot wasn't there, and then also turned this part of the shaft there down to 25 millimeters, which will then become the inner race of the um, roller bearing. <clears throat> then I chopped the front off, which as you can see, da -da -da -da. you can see from here, I basically chopped it off about here somewhere, got rid of it. Um, bored this piece here slightly so the, the new stub shaft or this this shaft pointed here because it's actually welded there now uh, that just fitted inside of here um, actually that's incorrect I bored a small spigot on there that went inside that sorry all, all the way around <coughs> and then basically put this which I now had two pieces of shaft put this in the lathe um, put that in the chuck that on the center crushed it together to make sure that it didn't go anywhere, tack welded it three times around, then welded it up while it was in the lathe under pressure that way to make sure that it didn't, uh, it didn't go out around. <coughs> then drilled and tapped two grub screws in here. Um, what you can't actually see on there is there is a spline and then there is a kind of an undercut and there is another spline basically these scrub screws now line up with that undercut <clears throat> so basically once the scrub screws go in if I lock tight them um, the steering wheel won't come in and out at all it'll sit on there just to make it so I can take it apart if I ever need to replace anything on the uh, <clears throat> on the power steering unit I can pretty much take this piece off take this piece off uh, and then replace whatever needs to be replaced at the back there so say so eventually we'll have I've lost the piece now. Where do we go? Oh, there we go. <coughs> so eventually we'll have that on there. And you will see that will fit inside. This is the plain diameter of the bearing. That'll go in there and that'll be the bearing. So you'll see that from the outside. And then obviously push the quick release down there. Yeah, fine. Super. <coughs> so there we have our steering. <coughs> There's now a reasonable amount of room around here to put my stalks that I want and need here to make sure that's clear. Um, steering wheel is a reasonable distance away from the dashboard. But I found that's the most comfortable place for me. Uh, my arms aren't extended, my arms are in a reasonably relaxed position, <coughs> which is perfect for me. So obviously we could shorten this quite a bit. We could bring this down down there further. I could bring it closer by probably an inch and a half if I wanted to, but I have no particular need to, so <coughs> there you go. If you wanted to put a crush structure there, that'd be possible. Anyway, secondly, <coughs> the gear stiff. The uh, gear knobs arrive now, so it's a Momo carbon covered aluminium, so it's not particularly light, the knob, but um, it does look really nice, so <coughs> anyway, so <coughs> if we look at our bottom units, all, all the pieces are in. Um, you can see if I move between the gates, we have that rod in there that's swinging. Obviously, the cable's going to front the back, and then we have the main unit there. When I'm putting it forward or back, that's the other rod in there. Now, they clear quite well, um, so it should be. <clears throat> and there's a reasonable amount of room for the steering wheel and the gear knob and the steering wheel now to basically get select between all the gears. So I'm pretty happy. The controls are pretty much done today, which is always nice to see a improvement. Um, like I said before, because I changed the gear stick to this side, basically I've moved the seat over, which basically meant that this here had to be moved over that way 20 mil to make basically the steering wheel. Um, the steering wheel is pretty damn central now to the seat. Um, I can't really, I can just line that up like that. <coughs> okay, that way. You can kind of see steering wheel center to there. And the pedal offset isn't as bad you can hardly really tell, to be totally honest, but pedal zero, offset, center line, steering wheel, seat. It's pretty good. I'm pretty happy with that, to be honest. So. <clears throat> what 
but unfortunately it meant that this tube here became defunct. So yet again, more, more tube dropping. And that's the original two inset uh, threaded bungs. So that tube got chopped out. <coughs> and I've just tacked in a new tube. Um, put two verticals on this one here. Um, I did just have the one previously, but I'm thinking I might just run those two tubes via another set of two tubes to the bottom and have a kind of a, uh, a two tubes running there with a bend running to the centre bottom to form part of the uh, centre console. We shall see just an idea, but these are just these aren't even tacked in at the moment, they're just sitting there, so I shall place them wherever I want them. <coughs> um, just one more tube to put in at the top which is the brace to this here. Um, I did find when I was taking it out, I left the dash and I left the body on before I took this out, uh, just to see how easy it was. <coughs> I realized a couple of things. A, that's aluminum space, is exactly how much the motor's moved over. This is the original, one of the original mounts. I think the spacer in there is actually a good idea now because it gives me more room when you take the bolt out to allow you to get it out. Also, I used to put the, I put the flange previously that holds this bolt on here via that tube, um, which is over here somewhere. Here you go. <coughs> this, this bolted flange there, the tab, what do you want to call it, was previously sat like that on that side. Now, I realised that I actually got to try and pull the column kind of this way when all the dash is on. So that tab actually becomes in the way. Um, so what I'm going to try and do is build a threaded unit at the back here and actually put the tab on that side. There's not much room around there, so probably won't have room for a nut. So I'll probably have to uh, shape a piece of steel, that shape, whatever else, drill it, have it mounted to that and basically use that as the threaded nut and then weld that to the tube. <coughs> so I want to remove the column, basically going to remove the column that way, down and out. Um, so that it doesn't basically get in the way. Obviously I can disassemble the column now. I can take the steering wheel off, then I can take the tube assembly off, pull that that way, and then I can pull the grub screws out of here and pull this off, so it makes it kind of short, but it would just be nice to take the whole electric unit and just take it down and out, so. <clears throat> there was a minor thing in the way which would have been pretty awkward if the dash was on top and the body was obviously bonded on. Um, it would have been a bit of a nightmare. I would have to make sure I've got a big hole here to hack and sort of get the uh, power steering unit out. Now I don't have to. I'll put it at the back. So, you know, I'm learning. It's one, one more good thing towards it, should we say. Um, so, yeah, that's kind of controls, which is cool. Uh, order the gear shift cables as well. Started modifying the... Uh, Started modifying the back here, um, realised I could actually just about get the original positioning. This is the bracket for the original Porsche unit that sat there. I can actually get it back into where it was originally. It does miss this rear plate, so um, mountings are going to be, one mounting will be on the plate, next mounting will be back here. It has to have a reasonable distance for the Bowden cable. So. <clears throat> Hopefully, once the cables come, then um, we should be good. Routing of the cable is going to come from this side, go around the gearbox, back down underneath the engine, and then through the fuel tank. Yes, there's going to be a hole through the fuel tank towards the cables, but it gives me the, the maximum bend radius, should we say, coming from there to there is about a 12 inch radius. Um, the specific cables I'm using, you can go down to a three inch radius on these particular cables I find very tight but a 12 inch rad seems you know go for the least amount of radius you can or the biggest radius you can shall we say <coughs> so there we go anyway waffling on god 14 minutes <coughs> I shall speak to you soon